pandemic is the defining challenge of our generation over the year. We strove to achieve a delicate balance of saving lives while keeping our economies afloat. We are now confronted with the complexity of enormity of recovering processes. We aim for a comprehensive recovery to build back better, healthier, and more prosperous societies. The path we must take is clear. It is that of deeper engagement on the issues, vital issues that bind us together as one Asian community. Our immediate priority is health security. We have to strengthen the health system by ensuring the unpeded supply of medical, su medical supplies and technologies and by enhancing early warning system for health emergencies. Let us fast track the implementation of the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework. COVID-19 ASEAN Response Fund, ASEAN Regional Reserve Medical Supplies, and the ASEAN Center for Public Health, Emergencies, and Emerging Diseases. We must work together to ensure that all nations rich or poor, will have access to safe vaccines. No one is safe until all of us are safe. On the economic front, we must deepen regional integration and strengthen supply chain connectivity. In this regard, we welcome the conclusion of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the RCEP Agreement. Growth to be truly transformative must be enjoyed by all. We must forge ahead with sub-regional arrangements such as the BIMP IAGA to bridge the development gaps within the region. In mitigating the impact of pandemic, our action must be people-centered. The massive displacement of workers including migrant workers, compels us to upskill and reskill our labor force. We must equip our people for the rapidly evolving labor market under the new normal. In this light, we welcome support for the Philippines' inaugural chairmanship of the ASEAN Technical and Vocational Education and Training Council. Rest assured that we will build partnerships to further implement the roadmap of the ASEAN Declaration on Human Resources Development for the changing world of work. As we recover, no sector must be left behind our efforts should be targeted and inclusive. We must address the disproportionate effects of COVID-19 on women, migrant workers, and other vulnerable sectors. We have to adopt gender responsive measures and strengthen social protection systems. We must also intensify cooperation in promoting and protecting the rights of migrant workers regardless of their status. Your Majesty, Excellencies, more than two weeks ago, the Philippines was battered by Typhoon Goni. And uh, if I must tell you, uh, we are now suffering in the midst of the storm of Typhoon Ulysses. There's uh, great damage and uh, I may not be around to attend uh, further in this regard for I have to go uh, around and see what I can do for my people. With the timely disaster preparedness measures, we were able to save many lives 
but the typhoon left a trail of destruction, infrastructure, and property. This represents a setback of a development agenda, particularly in the affected regions. This calamity is yet another stark reminder of the urgency of collective action to combat the effects of climate change. We must further enhance our cooperation on the disaster risk reduction management to reinforce our capacities both at the national and regional levels. More importantly, we must amplify our voices to demand climate change from those most, most responsible for the existential challenge we face today. Developed countries must lead in deep and drastic cuts in carbon emissions. They must act now or it will be too late. Or, if I may say, ardently, it is too late. They must also deliver on their commitment to finance and invest in innovative adoption solutions in developing world so we can have a fair shot at progress and sustainable development. This is their moral responsibility from which there should be no escape. Otherwise, it would be a great injustice, a double blow. Those who bear the brunt of the adverse consequences of their past actions and their present inactions. Your Majesty, Excellencies, we are committed to build a politically cohesive ASEAN at the center of the region's peace and security agenda. We have made significant progress towards the goal, but the current political landscape creates challenges to our claim of our centrality. As we chart our community's post-2025 future, it is crucial that we consolidate ASEAN's position in the evolving regional order. Dictated by zero-sum logic, external powers will continue to maneuver to get us to choose camps, and this we must resist consistently and fairly. Peace and stability can only be ensured by an open and inclusive order. Where ASEAN remains the fulcrum of regional security processes and mechanisms. ASEAN centrality is not, however, a constant given. We have to work for it to deserve it. We have to enhance our credibility as an independent actor able to engage all regional stakeholders with vision and strategic coherence. We must, therefore, remain united. We must show that we are masters of a region's destiny and that we can work together to achieve shared aspiration and solve common problems. As I have said before, the South China Sea is the ASEAN strategic challenge. How we deal with this matter lays bare our strengths and weaknesses as a community. We must act with haste. The Philippine position is clear and firm. We must solve the dispute peacefully and in accordance with international law, including UNCLOS. The 2016 Arbitral Award of the South China Sea is an authoritative interpretation of the application of UNCLOS. It is now part of international law, and its significance cannot be diminished nor ignored by any country, however big and powerful. The Philippines is one with ASEAN in transforming South China Sea into a sea of peace and prosperity for all. We are committed to the immediate conclusion of a substantive and effective code 
of conduct in the South China Sea. And if I may add, it has been a long time. And it is a long wait. Your Majesty, Excellencies, in closing, allow me to congratulate Vietnam for its adept and responsive chairmanship of ASEAN. This has been a challenging year, and Vietnam delivered the outcomes it has set out, and much more. Thank you.